Morning Star. Man to watch for years to come in the world of photography, Mr. Todd Heidel. Institute of Pittsburgh, 
It was, you know, Pittsburgh was kind of, a, you know, it's a couple of hours away from here. It was an easy school to go to, and that's kind of where I headed to. And, uh, and this is where I learned how to do a lot of, uh, you know, the techniques in photography. It was a really great school because it's kind of a commercial place, and it's interesting how, I mean, I, I, I teach in a college, actually, at the California College of Arts in San Francisco, and, you know, we still don't teach the kids how to, like, earn a living. You know, it's kind of funny how it works with fine art. But um, this was a commercial photography school, and it was really amazing because you ended up um, learning all the techniques of photography. You learned how to do, you know, studio shooting, 8x10 shooting, uh, you know, lighting, all this kind of stuff. So it really was a, it was an awesome kind of, um, uh, like, foundation in, in the technical aspect of photography. So then, and I've always, I've never been afraid of technique and stuff. So um, because of that, whenever I had an idea, I would just go out and do it. Um, so that's this is the kind of picture that I would take in that in that kind of a setting. You know, I was very much studio based, which is kind of interesting because now I never shoot anything but out in the world. But this is the kind of photograph I made at that point in time. Um, and then I went to school, and, um, and I kind of it was it was, a, it was a, just an associate's degree that I had, so I kind of wanted to. You know, I discovered that there was a whole other world of photography out there. And um, and then I went to the Boston Museum School. Um, and, and that's where I think things really clicked for me in, in, in a way about, you know, having a life in photography. And I was meeting artists like Emma Cowan and, and Eric Callahan. And um, uh, these were people that would come and visit our school, like lecturers and stuff like that. So that was really an amazing thing. Um, and so I took this picture up there. It was one of the first photographs that I took that was Kind of out of the studio, but had this kind of feeling or this mood to it that was um, something that was that I was looking for. I immediately recognized it. There was something about this that I really liked. So um, that's the picture. And then I also was shooting portraiture, you know, outside um, at the time. Very much influenced by like people like Sally Mann and Emma Gallon, like big influences on my work. Still to this day, I love both of their work. Um, Here's one of my first long exposures, you know, where I kind of realized that when you expose things for like this is about a 30, 40 second exposure, and I realized that, you know, things happened that were different when you did long exposures, and that there were things that were, um, it would happen, you know, like certain areas wouldn't expose, and other ones would never leave right. Um, so that was interesting. And then here's one of my first night shots. Um, it was a, a I was kind of out shooting, and I was during the daytime, and it got dark, and I remembered that, um, and I kept seeing things, so I, I kept wanting to shoot, and usually, you know, you don't take pictures at night, um, or at least it's kind of, you know, at least most people's pictures don't turn out at night. Um, and so, and I remember from this, like, reciprocity failure assignment that if you exposed it for a really long time, it, it would work. Um, and so, <laughs> that's what I did, and, uh, and that's how this picture worked out. And, Ironically, that's kind of still what I do today. You know, there's not a whole lot to it, because um, I just, you know, just shoot. Um, and this is the, you know, another picture here on that same night. And then, you know, I, I had always worked in in, in, in in black and white, and I'd never really done color photography um, in any serious way. It was just sort of like a, a small thing. And then, and I think a lot of it was because, you know, I do color, and I would hand it into the lab, and they'd make me a contact sheet, and just turn out kind of average looking, which is, you know, what they're supposed to do, um, make it look normal or average. And uh, when I was um, in, when I eventually went to school at, um, out in California, at the California College of Arts and Crafts, um, I was around a lot of people that were doing color photography. And, I, and where I came from in Boston, they were, it was very much kind of modernist, Bauhaus based, sort of like, you know, Harry, every teacher I had had to be, it was either Harry Callahan or Aaron Siskin were their teachers, you know. So that's what we learned, and that's how we did things. And we made these small little black and white prints, and, uh, and, and, and that's what we did. So when I got to California, I was all of a sudden with these people that were doing a lot of color photography, and they're making these big prints. This was in 1994. And, uh, um, and so, and since I was in grad school, I thought, you know, I need to this time to experiment, time to do something different. So I started shooting color, and then I remember somebody, one of my friends, taught me how to color print in the darkroom, and uh, he didn't tell me very much about it, which was actually good, I think, because um, I didn't have any rules that I needed to follow. So I just remember taking this picture, thinking that 